one of the logical of the ways, ways that we spoke, that we spoke about, about was the connection, was the connection between, between us, us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, we went through a few through things and a couple of subjects, subjects, subjects that the only that way the only that we way can that connect we to something else is else through, something, through else. something else. We gave the example gave of the example internet. internet. To access, to internet, access internet, internet, we need a, we need a internet, internet connection, internet wireless, connection, wireless connection, a computer, computer, connection, a, computer, computer a laptop, laptop or, phone phone call, phone or a mobile, mobile phone. phone. Mobile phone. Now the reason now, the we reason brought up this brought subject, up subject because, because we do we get, do attacked, get attacked, 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 unfortunately, unfortunately these days, these days, days, days by, by, by a lot of a people, lot of people, people that people. they are unbelievers, that they do not, do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they do not believe in Quran, and they don't have any sort of logic within them. So logics do not make sense with them. Now, this is very important that we know why we seek help from somebody beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the verse that I read at the start of my speech that is mentioned in Surah Al-Nisa, oh, it's uh, Surah Al-Ma'idah, excuse me, the verse of 35. It's good that we memorize these verses if we came across people that questioning these things. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu taqullah. Now, to explain the words of this verse where he says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. So, who are the believers? Or you, the ones that are the believers? Attaqullah. Be, fear, be feared by God. So, what's the meaning of taqwa or attaqullah? And the meaning of wabtaghu ilayhi al-wasila. Wajahadu fi sabilillah. And a strike for the cause of Allah, do jihad for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la'allakum tuflihun. So all of these things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to do is for one reason, la'allakum tuflihun. Now I'll give a small example for us, day by day living. Our, our goal in life what is our life? What is our goal in our life? For the people that study, for the people that run businesses, we do have a goal. A person with no goal has no life. It's like for somebody going out of his house with no intention of going anywhere. So you have to have a goal in your mind. Now, when you are a student, you study, you have a goal. Your goal is to be successful. When you are a business owner, your goal is to be successful. Because when you become successful, then you can find the benefits. When you become successful in your studies, then you can see the benefits of finding a good job and finding a job with good income. Now, this verse is one of the only verses in, in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appoints People that are believers, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, attaqullah, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this verse, these four or five words have only mentioned in Quran for eight times. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, attaqullah, wabtaghu ilayhi al-wasila. In other verses says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, attaqullah, wadharu ma baqiya min al-riba. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullah haqqa tuqah And about eight times in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullah Because there are levels of believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We are all believers of Allah We all believe that there is Allah There is a religion of Islam We believe in Prophet Just like the companions of Prophet at his time but only believing does not make any sense and doesn't get you anywhere. Believing on its own does not mean anything. A lot of people lived at the time of Prophet and were the close companions of Prophet. Or they could be buried next to Prophet. They were the believers, but were they the true, true believers? There are verses in Quran, twice in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned... 
ثم كفروا ثم آمنوا ثم كفروا so it doesn't mean anybody that was believer is a good Muslim is a good follower believing after that comes يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله to fear God or when Allah is awarding somebody or awarding uh, the believers it says وبشر الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها we award the ones that are believers and then they do good deeds after that the heavens and whatever is in heaven so believing itself does not mean anything anybody could be believers but who are the doers who are the muttaqin who are the ones that actually seek and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now in this specific verse of surah al-ma'idah verse of 35 ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu you who are the believers attaqullah fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wabtaghu ilayhi al-wasila and seek means 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 seeking closeness seeking somebody that can take you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so seek means of nearest to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so why do we do that why do we seek help or seek nearest to get to Allah la'allakum tuflihun to be successful to be successful could mean in this world and in the other world at the start of Quran after surah al-Fatiha we can see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala start surah al-Baqarah with the first five verses if you open up Quran the first two pages first page is surah al-Fatiha bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim alhamdulillah rabbil alameen to the end of uh, seventh verse which is all praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and things like that and then the next page when you turn to the next page which is five verses بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ميم ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه Quran is the book that there is no doubts in it هدى للمتقين It's a guide for those who fear Allah الذين يؤمنون بالغيب The ones that believe in unseen That, that means us We haven't seen Prophet We never seen any of the Imams We haven't seen any of the leaders of Islam الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ So we are the ones that are muttaqeen. We could be the ones that are muttaqeen because we believe in unseen. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ They don't just pray. They establish prayers. Praying, Allah could have said, وَصَلُّوا That means they prayed. Just like anybody else. Just like that, we see millions of people go to Hajj every year and they pray. But do they establish prayers? They don't. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And whatever we have provided them, they give out, they spend to others. And then the next verse, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ It's pointing to Prophet. The people that actually believe in you. Believe for the ones, for whatever we have relieved to you or revealed to you. وَالَّذِينَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ And whatever we have sent before you to other prophets. Next verse. أُولَٰئِكَ Now these people who are the believers, who are the ones that actually fear Allah. Now what are we going to award them with? أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَىٰ هُدًا مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ They are the ones that actually guarded on the correct way, on the correct cause, which is صراط المستقيم. وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ So the best award that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in Qur'an is to, for us to become successful. Being successful in this world by believing in Islam and doing what is asked for us to do and being successful in this in next life to be white-faced. Because a lot of people in the next world, they, they come to the, uh, the justice day and the faces are black. That's why when you do wudu, When you wash up for prayers, there's a special dua that you read. When you look at the water, you say, Bismillah, Billah, Walhamdulillah, Illadi, Jalama, Tahura, Walam Yajal, Hunajisa. And then when you wash your face, you say, Allahumma bayyad wajhi yawma taswaddu fi hal wujuh. Wala tusawwad wajhi yawma tabiyadu fi hal wujuh. 
You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to whiten your face for the day that everybody's face is black. And do not endark my face on the day that everybody's face is white. Now, the best reward is to be successful. How can we be successful? There are a few ways. Now, there is a speech of Imam Ali alayhi salam in Nahjul Balagha, speech 109 or 110. That Imam Ali alayhi salam mentioned, "Inna afdala ma tawassala bihi al-mutawassiluna ila Allah." The best ways for the seekers to seek toward Allah subhanahu wa taala are al-iman to believe, jihad to strike, aqam al-salah to establish prayers, ita al-zakat to give out to poor. Psalm Shahar Ramadan, Hajj Baytillah al Haram, Wal Umra, Salat al Rahim, Wa Amal al Khair, and things like that. And he has not mentioned specifically to seek help or seek closeness and nearness from Ahl Bayt. Now, we get attacked by this speech itself from Imam Ali, that Imam Ali never mentioned to seek help from Abu Fadl al Abbas, from, from himself, Imam Ali, Imam Ali alayhi salam. Oh, Imam al Hussein. Now, the only way to seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not through prayers or fasting or doing good things. For example, when the first Khalifa and the second Khalifa passed away, they were asked and they were given the award of being buried next to Prophet. Now, why do they want to be buried next to Prophet? Where well, Aisha asked everybody to bury his father, Abu Bakr, next to Prophet, because she knew that this is a holy place. If they think that this is shirk, this is something wrong, that we believe that places are holy beside Kaaba, they think that Karbala and Najaf, that they have these stupid names for these holy places that I do not want to mention. Now, if they think these places were not holy, how come they wanted the first Khalifa and the second Khalifa to be buried next to Prophet? For example, we want to build a mosque. We go ask for a stone maker to make us some stones to decorate the mosque. Now, the stone itself is not holy. But the second this stone becomes a part of this mosque, it becomes a holy stone. But the same stone, when it was cut in half, and one half of it came to a mosque, and the other half was passed to a bathroom or a toilet, that stone is no longer holy, or cannot be holy, because it was never entered a holy place. Like in Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked Musa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning that you are in a, in a holy part of earth. You have to take your shoes off. So there are places like Shajarat al Tayyibah. There are places, there are things on earth that they are holy. We can't say there is no, nothing holy. That's number one. Now, beside places, when we want to decorate a Quran, we get a case. This case could be leather. This leather comes from a skin of a cow. Now, the same skin could be used to case and to decorate a Quran for it to last long, for it to hold its pages. Or we can use the same leather to make shoes. Now, when he gave this Quran to a, to a Wahhabi or to somebody who is not a good believer, they probably kiss it. But if you give them a shoes, they're not going to kiss the shoes. Even though they are kissing the, the leather, it's not the leather itself that they are kissing. Because this leather, leather has been positioned with something really holy, something really great, which is Quran. When we go to, to the sanctuary of Imam Ali, we go to the Haram of Imam Ali. We go to the sanctuary of Abu Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam. When we touch the walls, when we touch the, the doors, when we touch the dharih or the grave, it's not because it is a metal and the metal is holy. No, because the metal 
has been in place in a place on a part of a world, in a part of the earth, that this place is a holy place. And because of that, everything within this sanctuary has become holy. It's something that we can worship. Not like what we worship Allah. This is something that we can seek closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a verse of 40, 64 of Surah An-Nisa that I mentioned last week, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ وَاسْتَغْفَرُوا وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولِ لَوَجَدُوا اللَّهِ تَوَّابًا رَحِيمًا This verse is so clear that even the dumbest Wahhabi could understand the plain meaning of this verse. For the people that attack us about seeking nearness from anybody beside Allah. وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ If they came to you, Prophet, if they came to you and they have committed sins, وَاسْتَغْفَرُوا And they seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولِ And if the Rasul seeked forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them, لَوَجَدُوا اللَّهِ تَوَّابًا رَحِيمًا After these procedures, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them. So unless there is a procedure, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive anybody that easy. Now they probably just say, okay, you guys said, وَاسْتَغْفَرَ اللَّهُمُ الرَّسُولِ So it has to be prophet. Why do you seek help from Imam Ali, from Abu Fadl Abbas, from Awliya Allah, from the people that were not leaders, they were not a'imma, they were not ma'sumin. Now we have to understand and they have to understand that the word is mentioned in this verse, it says, وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولِ If God, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was mentioning Prophet only on this verse, he would have said, وَاسْتَغْفَرْتَ لَهُمْ And then you would have seeked forgiveness for them. But Allah didn't say that. He said, وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولِ Now, who is Rasul? Rasul is a position, is a mission of guidance. So when you guide somebody and you actually earn that position and then you hold that mission of guiding people, you become a Rasul, which we call Rasale. Now Rasale of prophecy and guiding people pass from prophet one after the other throughout the leaders of, of 12 leaders of Shia, of Islam I would say, until Imam al-Mahdi. So this mission has been passed on one after the other, because the Rasala would not finish by the death of Prophet. Now they might say, okay, these people are dead. You just said after death of Prophet. Now, Prophet could be death in body, in meat, in blood, and in bones. But Prophet himself cannot be death, dead. Like in verse of 154 of Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَنْ يُقْتَلُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتِ بَلْ أَحْيَاء وَلَكِنْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ Do not mention, do not say the ones that actually died in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they are dead. بَلْ أَحْيَاء You don't know, they are actually alive. بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ They are alive with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَكِنْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ You don't understand, you can see, you can feel. You can comprehend. And then further down, it says, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتِ بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ Don't even think that the people that died in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are dead by any chance. بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ that are alive, alive with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being fed and provided. So we can't even think that a person that did jihad or became shaheed, martyred, could be dead. How can we say a prophet is dead? How can we say a prophet of Islam that was the best creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could be dead? How could Imam Ali alayhi salam be dead where prophet himself said, Imam Ali is my nafs, is myself. In the ayah that says, 
آية الابتهال فقل تعالى وندعو أبناءنا وأبناءكم ونساءنا ونساءكم وأنفسنا وأنفسكم إمام علي عليه السلام has been mentioned and given the position of prophet as if he, he is prophet so how can we say these people are dead so they are not dead we have the right of seeking help from these people because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned whoever has the mission and the position of risala, of guiding, has the right to be seeked help. Not just Prophet himself. In Surah Al-Yusuf, where the sons of Ya'qub, after what they did to, to Prophet Yusuf, came to Ya'qub, and they said, Ya Abana astaghfir lana. Oh, Dad, seek forgiveness for us. If this was shirk, if this was wrong, Prophet himself, who was a prophet and a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, would have said, what are you asking me for? This is shirk. What are you telling me? You should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he didn't. He actually seeked forgiveness for them. These people think that prophets are imams are dead. We had a teacher back in Iran. He said, when we went to Hajj, we were close to Prophet's grave. And I was asking Prophet for a few things. For rizq, for health, for good family. And one of these, what they call themselves, the gardens of, of Haram and Nabi, the people that actually look after the Haram, they said, why are you asking Prophet? Prophet is dead. He said, he took out his pen he said, look, prophet, grab this pen. Do you see him grabbing his pen? He's not alive. He's dead. He's, he's dead in his grave. He said, I'll grab the pen from him. He said, give me the pen. I grabbed the pen. I said, Allah, get this pen. Allah, where are you? How come, the God, how come Allah is not grabbing my pen? He said, he went quiet. The fact that prophet or any of the emma are not physically alive next to us, even though they could be and people can see them, doesn't mean they are dead. They can hear us. They can see us. That's the ideology that they have. And we have to be prepared. As the youth of Shia, as the ones that are actually gifted to be born as Shia, and on top of that, to be gifted to born within such families, we are gifted. It's like gold. It's, it's like somebody giving us diamond, okay? And we have to know the, the worth of it, how much it's worth. We have to be prepared for any strike that could become from the other, the other side of people that actually believe or unbelieve in Islam. They disbelieve in Islam. Just like when it's mentioned in the Quran, they even increased their unbelief. We have to be prepared. We have to be prepared. And on the other hand, we have to be successful. Both in this life, we have to be successful as normal human beings. And as Muslims and as Shias, being su successful in our religion finding out what our religion is all about and what we have to learn. So inshallah, in the next world, we all be successful. We all seek help from A'immat al-Athar to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to hopefully be able to fear God, to be min al-muttaqeen, the ones that actually given a level, just one level be above being mu'min, being believer. And then hopefully we can reach the position of muflihun, of the people that are successful. At the end, I would like to just pray that, inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah would forgive us for all the sins that we have committed. And we take a'immat al-athar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, to forgive us and help us to be better human, to be better Shias in this world, so hopefully next world we can be white-faced.
And at the end, we just would like to pray Dua Al Faraj together. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Allahumma kulla waliyika al Hujjat ibn al Hassan. Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaeh. Fi hadhi al Sa'a wa fi kulla Sa'a. Waliyan wa hafadan wa qaidan wa nasira. Wa dalilan wa aina. حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله على محمد وآل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين